Hello everyone, my name is Jake Britnell. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk. Today I'll be giving some recent findings on the conservation of the margins, ecological marginalisation, increased extinction risk in mammals. So in this study we modelled the um, historic and contemporary ranges of 4,785 terrestrial mammal species. We modelled them using hypervolume and minimal convex uh, elliptoid models and most of these are a combination of topographic and climactic variables. So this is minimum and maximum temperature, precipitation and temperature and precipitation seasonality, also elevation and slope. The native ranges came from the thylacine data set, so the contemporary ranges. We modelled the historic range as uh, using Holocene general circulation models to get an idea of the climate, climatic conditions and niches animals would occupy prior to main, like large-scale widespread human in, uh, appropriation of land. And also we trimmed the biomes to the uh, biomes we actually know animals occupy from the IUCN red list. And so what we looked in this was geographic range loss, habitat diversity loss, niche loss, which is the hypervolume size differences, and climactic shifts, so whether they're being pushed to their climactic center or their climactic average or their climactic extremes. We also looked at what we call ecological marginalization. So a niche will be modeled in three dimensions. We look at whether the, um, the range of attractions push animals towards the center of historic niche or the edge of its historic niche. So some of the findings that we found were, firstly, as animals lose geographic range, they also, their niches shrink. So they do not occupy the same amount of niche space they historically would. Also, we found, but it's not presented here, that as animals lose greater amounts of geographic range, they lose an increased number of ecoregions. So they lose a greater proportion of their his, uh, habitat diversity. So as, niche, as geographic range extraction um, makes mammalian um, ranges smaller, it actually uh, makes them more homogeneous and shrinks their niche. What we also found was a common trend was that as animals lose geographic range, they are pushed to their precipitation, elevation, and slope extremes. We also found correlations with uh, temperature, but that is also not presented here. So what, what we have on these axes are uh, a, the effect size shift of your precipitation in the left, elevation and slope on the right, and geographic range loss. So it's an, the animals that have lost, ge disproportionately lost more geographic range have been pushed to their climatic and topographic extremes. These climatic and topographic, topographic extremes may be marginal environments, areas where the animals do not perform well. And we also found, using two different metrics of ecological marginalization, that was Mahalamobis distance, so you get all the niche points of your contemporary and historic ranges, and you look at each, the average distance, the effect size change of the average distance, the historic niche center, that's Mahalamobis distance, and if it's pushed away from the center is increasing amounts of mahalamobis distance. So here you've got ecological marginalization increasing with geographic range loss and also you've got the, the difference between the two niche centers. So the difference between the two niche centers also increases as geographic range loss increases. All of this suggests that animals are pushed to the periphery of their niche uh, which also may be suboptimal as geographic range loss continues. This is most uh, poignant and also most crucial in small range and large bodied animals. So large bodied animals are disproportionately more likely to be ge experience geographic range loss and so are animals with uh, small ranges and they are disproportionately more likely to be pushed to the edge of their niche. What we also found was when we ranked the IUCN, re IUCN scalings using an ordinal scale, we found that animals that experience greater amounts of shift towards their niche peripheries also had greater IUCN rankings, independent of geographic range loss. So what we're suggesting is that being pushed to the edge of your periphery increases your extinction risk, independent of how much range you've actually lost. And in the wider context, this is important, because what this could be leading to is animals have already lost a large proportion of geographic range. They're then being pushed to their niche uh, periphery, where they have poor reproductive and survival rates. Those, can, those niche peripheries, because they're the last areas animals occupy, can then become protected. And then we end up protecting a perceived optimal, which is lower than what we have, what would have historically been an optimal environment. And the problem with this is that that, that its marginal environment will not bolster the largest and uh, larger population sizes or the greatest uh, resilience of reproductive rates. And therefore the animals are more likely to be, uh, be vulnerable to extinction, independent of protection or not. And there are examples of that. So. Thank you for listening to my talk. I would like to acknowledge my supervisors, uh, everyone in my lab, and also my external internal uh, viva, as I've just finished my PhD at the University of Manchester. If you'd like to contact me, here is my contact details. Thank you very much, and thank you to my funders. Thank you.